I, I just wrote to Father Lou Studer. It's been a wonderful experience. I have received so much affirmation and support from going around to the Oblates here, you know? Uh, it's good to be home. I, I say the world is my home now, but the roots are here. And the province, uh, you know, helped me become who I am, as well as the poor in Brazil, the formators and the, uh, the formation, the experiences I had here in the States certainly helped me. I have been mostly in Oblate gatherings. You know, I haven't seen exactly the mission and what, what Oblates are doing right now. Um, I was in Canada just before coming here with the gathering of the young Oblates. Uh, it became the youngish Oblates. Uh, there were uh, 20 Oblates from the four provinces, the three in Canada and the one in the States. And then there were some other, you know, like myself, I was there, uh, Father Luke Studer, the provincial of the States, Father Luke Tardif, the provincial of Notre Dame du Cap, uh, Ken Thorson, Father Ken Thorson from OMI Lacombe, and uh, Father Pavel Ratajczak from Assumption Province. So there were about 25 of us with the facilitator looking at the future of the region. And, you know, it was immensely hope-filled. Uh, the, the spirit is, the Oblates have a lot to give to the church in Canada and the U.S. And the reality is we're aging, we're fewer, but we're very much alive. We have a lot to give to the church and to the people of God. So uh, that began, that was just before I then came to the States. So uh, that has been with me, the hope for the future. Our mission, uh, our way of life, will probably be different, but we're, we're kicking to, you know, invite young men to join us. We're struggling and praying to have vocations come, to have formation programs that are well, um, with, with form formators who are well prepared so that we can prepare future missionaries for Canada and the States. So uh, I was in uh, Buffalo and saw a little bit of the mission there. And it's always impressive to see how an old neighborhood where the churches were emptying out is now changing with so many immigrants. To see parishes rebound, not with the old parishioners maybe because they've gone, they've died or they've gone on to other, moved to California or Florida, but to see uh, Karani people, to see Rwandans, to see Somalians, Filipinos is a, is a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing. I have felt very close to God and very blessed during these years uh, of different, you know, in people, in oblates, in their, their love for the poor and their closeness to the poor, their generosity. I have felt this in uh, the, the, the lay associates. I have seen the beauty of God in nature. I have seen also in our young people who come to us was on fire for the charism, on fire to be missionaries. And when I talk to them, uh, I'm filled with joy. One, uh, one scholastic in, uh, it was in Lesotho. And you know, they ask questions, how many oblates do we have, all these. But he said, what is your dream for the congregation? You know, I said, oh, thank you. That will, that will open up a long talk, you know. I think it's the dream of St. Eugene that we would be close to the poor, serving the poor, what, what, the poor that nobody else is taking care of, uh, that we would be holy, holy men, men of prayer, men of God, and that we would be brothers in community, a, a deep communion of brotherhood. Uh, you know, those three things, centered in Christ, you know, all those other things. But for me, I think uh, the, the spirit and the call of like the chapters we've had is that we, re we review our ministries. Are we in ordinary things doing what other people could do? Or should we have an exodus? and go in light of the needs of the reality in which we live and really uh, be close to the poor and in, 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 in not, I, you know, 
a part of our mission, of course, is assisting the poor in many different ways, but also the evangelization, bringing the gospel. St. Eugene wanted to, I think it was like St. Francis, rebuild the church, strengthen the church. And we can see the church, uh, St. Eugene said in the preface, the glorious inheritance of Christ uh, is devastated by the, the French Revolution. And in a sense, uh, the, the, the inheritance, the glorious inheritance of Christ, the church, is devastated in our own day. How can we touch those who uh, have forgotten the gospel, have, who have been alienated by the church? How can we bring them back to the body of Christ? So that's, you know, uh, to not be in comfortable ministries, to really uh, get out of ordinary pastoral structures uh, to reach those who are not uh, coming, who, are not, who do not know Christ. And then the other, you know, to be holy men. I, I'm glad I, the Holy Father wrote this uh, letter on holiness because we don't talk about it anymore. I think we have a, an idea from the 18th century of holiness, so we just dismiss it. But he's talking about holiness in everyday life. Uh, ordinary acts of extraordinary, you know, uh, love, of extraordinary service, of extraordinary generosity. And then the third thing, we have to work better among ourselves to live the communion of, of brothers and, and also our ministry as fruit of our community life. Because the, the pull of uh, our, you know, I don't know how much, last 100 years or 50 years is the strong individualism, the strong, you know, I work, I, I, I do what I want to do, what I like to do. And it, sometimes it's wonderful work, absolutely. But our vocation is to do that as, as brothers in community. So that's kind of a, a dream, you know, the, the really with the poor, uh, holy men, and doing mission in and through community.